Tillo, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it. Warning screen. Don't forget twitch.com. Username at the bottom if you want to watch uh, live streams and things of that nature. I suggest y'all to be following me on there and just in case you never see me somewhere else. Um, don't forget we do got Patreon where we post Monday through Friday. We about to start a new show Monday, matter of fact. I got court Monday, that's tough. So after court, <laughs> we gonna start a new show. Uh, dang, I just remembered that. That's good timing. Uh, the link to all of that is down below in the description, man. Let's get into this, man. This is UK Drill Plug. The Deadly Divide in South London, 417 verse 37. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. This is on UK Drill Plugs channel. Salute to that person. Um, lock in with them, go follow. Let's go. Wandsworth is a borough located in southwest London. From an outside look-in, Wandsworth looks like a safe borough, with it even being ranked within the top 10 safest boroughs in London. However... Mm. Okay. Wandsworth. Ain't that the prison? Isn't Wandsworth's prison over there, too? So people got beef in the safest borough? Just go be safe. What a lot of people aren't aware of is the violent war between two opposing gangs in the area, those being 417 and 37. In recent years, we would see the rise of 417 and 37 in drill, with rappers like D-Rose, Sniz, and SK rapping under the 417 gang, and on the other side, Burner, Scorbeezy, and Schemer rapping under the 37 gang. Now, 417 is a large street- Okay, I know Scorbeezy and Burner. I think I heard that D-Rose and SK- Street gang based around Tooting on several different estates. This includes the Hazelhurst estate and Tooting Grove estate within the SW17 postcode. 417 would form in the early 2000s and would be referred to as TBG or Tooting Black Gang. Later on in the 2000s, they would start referring to themselves as TTS or Tooting Trap Stars. TTS would mainly beef nearby SUK or better referred to as 37 nowadays. TTS would mainly be allied with nearby TZ or Terror Zone, which has become better known as Mitchum in recent years. During the late 2010s, TTS would start referring to themselves as 417 due to their postcode being S. W17 and due to their close alliance with nearby CR4 from Mitchum. Now no gang is complete without its ops, so let's talk about 37. Now 37 is a gang based within the borough of Wandsworth. The gang isn't based around one particular area, but instead it's spread throughout Wandsworth. 37 is based around the areas of Battersea, Clapham Junction, Roehampton, and Southfield. These areas cover the SW15, SW11, SW18, and SW19 postcodes. 37 would originally be referred to as Junction Boys in the 1990s. They even had a rivalry with Peckham Boys around these times. However, in the early 2000s, a younger generation of Junction Boys named SUK or Stick'em. Hey, bro, had one of the hardest pendants in the game. However, in the early 2000s, a younger generation. That pendant is hard of Junction Boys named SUK, or Stick 'em Up Kids, would emerge due to the older Junction Boys name dying out. SUK would often rep the color yellow in gang pictures and music videos, which they still do today. In the mid-2010s, SUK would start referring to themselves as 37, with it being alleged they named themselves this, due to the bus that goes through each area of the gang, being named the 37 bus. Now these two gangs wouldn't always have a rivalry. In the early 2000s, there was a brief period of time where TTS, SUK, and TZ were all allies under an alliance referred to as SNT or Stack and Trap. However, this would all change. Whilst it's largely unknown how the beef between these gangs started, it's probably over a girl. <laughs> probably over a girl or some some I'm I'm or some petty. Largely speculated that in I could 2003, be wrong, though, but that's what I assume. A girl that was dating a SU. I'm never wrong. I'm always right. <laughs> No gangs are different. They're all the same across the world. Anybody that was alive, allied once, they beef now because of a female. It's 100%.
UK member would then cheat on him with a Mitchum member. However, this can't be proven. So if you do know any more, put it in the comments. Hey, that, I believe what that, that, I believe that theory, 100%. Anyways, after this incident, the two areas would start to have tensions with each other. It's very common to see two gangs start to beef over small incidents like girls and money. TZ would ally with TTS, and they would start to beef SUK. However, the beef wouldn't be that active until 2006. <laughs> In November 2006, members of SUK, including Fruge, would be held up and robbed by TTS and TZ members. A fight would break out between the members. However, luckily, no one was injured. Now, the SUK members would be looking for retaliation for this incident, and the next day, 14 SUK members, including Fruge, would travel to Mitcham, which was territory of TTS and TZ. They would spot a group of TTS and TZ members, and a fight would ensue. A huge brawl would occur with 60 members being present. Sadly, Fruge would end up being stabbed multiple times by TTS and TZ members, he would be pronounced dead on the scene, with all of the members involved fleeing. Five of the members would be arrested and charged with the murder. A TTS member would be handed 12 years for the murder, and the other four members would also be found guilty however were given small sentences. Rest in peace, Fruge. Now- Yeah, R.I.P. But like, how many of us believe this beef started over a female and look where, but look where, it, <coughs> oh, look where it elevated to. The death of Fruge would explode the beef into a full-on war, with robberies, stabbings, and shootings taking place between the gangs during this time. Over two years later, on the 3rd of November 2008, a TTS member named ND, or Nathan Douglas, would be parked with friends on Lebanon Road. However, ND would leave the car to go meet someone down the road at 11.30pm. Only moments later, ND would return to his friends with a stab wound to the neck. His friends would make an attempt to get help from emergency services. However, ND would be pronounced dead on the scene. A murder investigation investigation was launched initially two people that neck and that grind area if you get hit in one of those areas it's gonna be tough man had been arrested for this incident. However, no charges were brought to them, and even up till this day, the murder goes unsolved. However, it's largely speculated that SUK members were responsible for this murder. However, until someone has been charged for the murder, this can't be proven. Rest in peace, ND. The beef would be active after this murder, with tit-for-tat incidents playing out in the streets. In 2012, younger members of SUK would start to rap under the SUK name. These music videos would be full of yellow bandanas and rude bars, with a younger rapper named Scorbeezy starting to rap around these times, Scorbeezy would drop Scorbeezy, a song nice. around this time with another SUK member named Veli. However, sadly, Veli would be shot to death two months prior to the song dropping. With the murder still being unsolved up until this day, rest in peace Veli. Scorbeezy would be very active around the early 2010s, with his music videos gaining a lot of traction in the underground drill scene. Scorbeezy has had a very successful rap career with his early and recent songs gaining millions of views. TTS would also be rapping in 2013, with them dropping a few freestyles on YouTube. However, these songs didn't gain much success, and a lot of them have since been deleted off the platform. Not much is known about the beef during the early 2010s, however the beef would explode with a new generation of each gang emerging, with TTS starting to refer to themselves as 417, and SUK starting to call themselves 37 around this time. In 2016, younger members of each gang would start to get active in the streets, and these members would prove to be deadly. Oh, is that new that new generation of gang members crazy? One hundred percent. On the 18th of April 2016, a 20-year-old member of 417 named Pace would be dropped off onto a road in Tooting. Pace would be planning to meet up with friends that evening. At around 3.30 p.m., Pace would be walking to meet up with his friends when a member of 37 would spot him. An argument would ensue between the two members. This sadly resulted in Pace being stabbed multiple times in the chest by the 37 member. Pace would stagger onto Thrail Road where people would try and save him. However, their attempts to save his life would sadly not work, and he would be pronounced dead on the scene with a murder murder investigation being launched. A popular member of 37 named Burner would be arrested for this murder and would be fake. Burner, we know who Burner is. 417, like it's coming back to me who 417 is. Yeah, so we've reacted to a lot of 417 a murder charge. However, he would bust the case due to insufficient evidence. After the death of Pace, 417 would start referring to themselves as other names. This included Ugly and Pace World. This was in order to pay respects to their fallen friend. It was around 2016, after the death of Pace, that we would start to see 417 dropping songs. This included SK and D Rose, who would start dropping songs in September 2016, with the songs being marked with the title Pace's World. Rest in peace, Pace. After the death of Pace, 417 members would be looking for revenge in any 
way they could, with members from both gangs often getting into stabbings or shootouts resulting in members being injured critically. Just under a year later, in March 2017, 417 would find the retaliation they were looking for. On the 28th of March 2017, 417 members would use a stolen Nissan Micra and ride onto their op block in the search of any 37 members. An alleged affiliate of 37 named Mally would be walking- I'm still shocked that all of this is over a female. The whole initial reason, yes, I know it's deeper now, but the initial startup was over a female. All these lives love home after spending the evening at his friend's house. The 417 members would spot Mally, and three of them would jump out of the car and run up to Mally, where a fight would ensue. This resulted in Mally being stabbed multiple times. The 417 members would then get back in the car and flee the scene. Police and paramedics would be called to the scene at 1.10 a.m. However, despite their best attempts to save Mally, he would be pronounced dead only 40 minutes later, with the cause of death being a stab wound to the heart. Now, it originally took a few months for police to connect the people responsible to the crime scene. However, months later, three 417 members would be charged and found guilty for playing a role in the murder, with them being charged for perverting the course of justice. This meant they destroyed evidence which would link them to the crime. Rest in peace, Mally. 417 wouldn't stop there, and under a month later, another op would fall victim to the violence. On the 25th of April 2017, another alleged affiliate of 37 named Lil Mo, who was only 17 years old, would be cycling through Battersea just after midnight. What Lil Mo didn't know was that 417 members and M Town members, who were from nearby by Mitchum would be looking for ops. The members would spot Lil Mo and would drive into Lil Mo knocking him to the ground. The gang then jumped out of the car and stabbed Lil Mo multiple times. The members would flee, pretty much leaving Lil Mo for dead. Ambulances would arrive on the scene, however sadly Lil Mo would be pronounced dead 90 minutes later. A murder investigation would be launched following this and would result in all four of the members, including a 417 member named Suspect being charged in relation to the murder. He would be handed a 27-year sentence. A lot of these cases went from being unsolved to everybody being bumped off. That should tell you a lot about the, the, the dignity inside any gang nowadays. Back in the day, there was a no-speaking policy and people really abided by it. Hence, unsolved cases. Nowadays, they get four people. You ride out, with, you ride out so deep, somebody's bound to say something. And the whole case is cracked. Now, Plus CCTV and all of that stuff is crazy. Now. It's not known if Lil Mo was involved with 37, with a lot of people arguing he was affiliated and others arguing he wasn't. Rest in peace, Lil Mo. Around these times, Striker from Active Gang would even start repping 417, as his half brother is allegedly suspect from 417, who we just spoke about. 417 and nearby Mitchum would start to drop more songs in 2017, as drill as a genre was starting to be heavily popularized throughout London at this time. Mitchum members like SG and M Bunny would start to see a lot of success during this time with their songs. Drill is on a very rapid decline in the UK now. Not because the artists aren't good, but it's watered down now. It's too many people that are not about the life speaking like they are about the life, and it's hard to see what's real and what's not. So people are just choosing to just, eh, it's over with raking in hundreds of thousands of views. The gang beef between 417 and 37 would still be active after the death of Lil Mo, with a 37 member named BS even being shot in the head by 417 members around this time. Luckily, he would survive. However, this incident is often referred to on recent 417 songs. In 2018, 37 would start to see their first bit of musical success, with a younger member named Burner starting to drop songs frequently. Burner is actually the cousin of popular rapper M24 from 150, oh, with yeah. them even linked up multiple times on songs to drop UK drill bangers, Burner would drop a song called Mad Moves in May 2018, which would rake up millions of views, and currently- It's right before COVID. See, drill got busting right before COVID, right, in the UK. Then COVID hit, boom, and everybody was locked in. And then after COVID, it had like a year or two tops at its peak still. Because everybody was outside going to concerts, and they were still busting, maybe two, three years. Nah, two years. And then after that, it became a fad. It became just a means to get on. All right, let me rap like this just to get views. 
So that's what killed him. Lee sits me. on 2.6 million views. Later in December, Burner would feature on a massive link up named The Coldest Link Up. This song would blow and currently sits on 6.9 million views. It started to look like Burner could solidify himself in the drill scene. However, Burner wasn't the only one from 37 starting to blow. Another rapper named Schemer would also blow up during this time, with him dropping UK drill bangers like Toast Up and Red or Blue. 2018 would end and 2019 would begin. In March 2019, Burner would drop a song named Named Maddest of Maddest. This song now everybody locked up. would instantly gain success, with it currently sitting on 2.5 million views. It was looking good for 37, with them starting to gain success in the drill scene, and whilst they were blowing up, another person would sadly fall victim to the streets. On the 14th of June 2019, a younger member from 37 named Stomps, who was also affiliated with nearby CT or Claptown, who beef gangs like 67, LTH, and Serac, would be walking down D Side Road in Wandsworth when a 67 member named Giant would spot stomps a fight would ensue between the members yeah some legitimate ops Six, seven, However, eight, sadly, seven. this would end in Stomps being stabbed multiple times by Giant. Giant would flee the scene, leaving Stomps in critical condition. Ambulances would arrive on the scene moments later. However, despite their best efforts at saving Stomps, he would sadly be pronounced dead only a short time later. A murder investigation would be launched following this, with it only taking six days for police to attach Giant to the crime. However, it has been alleged ah. four 17 members were present, although this can't be confirmed. Giant would be found guilty and charged for the murder. In 2020, Giant would receive a life sentence with a minimum of 25 years. Rest in peace, Stomps. After the murder of Stomps, younger 6-7 members would start to drop disrespectful songs on him. However, I go a lot more in-depth in my 6-7 vs. 150 video. Anyways, 417 wouldn't really drop music around this time, with 417 being one of the most inconsistent groups in UK drill. However, 2020 would be a very dangerous year for the feud, with 417 and Mitchum looking for any chance to catch their ops. On the 20 2020, we were still in COVID. I think 2021 it started to be done. 7th of January 20, or late 2020 it started to be 20, done. A 16 year old member of 37 named Els would be standing outside of East Croydon Station. However, what Els was unaware of was the fact that a 417 member named Kins would spot him at the train station. Kins would approach Els and a fight would break out between the members. Kins would draw a knife during the fight and would stab Els once in the chest, leaving Els in critical condition. Kins would flee the scene. However, sadly, Els would be pronounced dead on the scene, meaning another murder investigation would be launched. It took a few days for police to find Kins, with them identifying him through CCTV videos of him dancing and singing in a shop shortly after the murder. Kins would be charged and found guilty of the murder, and in September 2020, he would be sentenced to a minimum of 16 years in prison. Years, Rest in huh? peace, Els. After the murder of Els, Burner would continue to build up his music career. However, this would all change only months later. In June 2020, Burner would upload pictures of him holding over 100,000 pounds in cash on Instagram. Police would start to look into Burner, with the police raiding Burner Burner's home. They would find the 100,000 pounds in cash, two watches, a machete, and jewelry at the scene. Oh, godly, such an incredible, bro, heavy amount of money, man. It ain't even, we know you got it at this point. You ain't got to show us. Yo, your IG got you jammed. Burner along with five other people were arrested and would be facing serious drug charges. Burner would be sentenced to 12 years in prison. However, it's likely he will only do half, meaning he will most likely be home soon. The beef would Oh yeah, that's soon. You're going to be out. Continue to play out whilst Burner was in jail. Later in 2020, an alleged 37 member named Big Ls was even burned to death. The attackers were allegedly M-Town members. Oh. However, this hasn't been confirmed, and it may even be an unrelated incident. Rest in peace, Big Ls. However, since 2020, no major acts of violence would play out between the gangs, although stabbings and shootings still do occur regularly. In 2022, 417 would release a song named Ugly Cypher 2.0. This is widely regarded as one of the rudest drill songs, with 417 naming all of their dead Ops. It looked as if 4 7 I'm not familiar with it. I don't think I've heard it. Teen could come back to drill. However, we haven't seen any music from them since 2022. This is probably due to all of their members being in jail, with the members being free, most likely focusing on money and not music. 37 have also been somewhat active in the music scene, with rappers like Scorbeezy, Jigga, and Schemer dropping in 2022. However, they haven't kept much consistency, and 37 are regarded as a pretty inconsistent group within the yeah. drill scene. Like 417. I heard a song from any of them. 37 have a 
lot of rappers incarcerated at the moment, and a lot of the younger generation mostly focus on money. If this video highlights one thing, it should be that this road life isn't worth it. A lot of the time there are only two outcomes, those being jail or death. A lot of these people in this video have lost friends to either jail or violence. This just further proves that the road life isn't worth living. Rest in peace everyone in this video. If you 100% man. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do in life, but when you trying to make you when you trying to turn the corner and elevate yourself, go ahead, turn it. <laughs> All the way. Can't be one foot in, one foot out. And we know that. Tell her, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and go.